I'm Jennifer McAdam, a plant physiologist at Utah State University. I study pastures for beef and dairy production. We've made this video to demonstrate how a rising plate meter can be used in the management of rotationally grazed pastures. When a pasture is set up for rotational grazing, it's subdivided into smaller areas or paddocks that are grazed one at a time. The ideal time to move animals to a new paddock is when the forage plants have just reached maturity while their quality or nutritive value is still high. The best time to move them to the next paddock is when the forage has been grazed down to three or four inches, at least in the case of most cool season pastures. This drawing shows orchard grass and tall fescue, two common pasture plants. They're both bunch grasses and they store the nutrients they accumulate above ground at the base of their leaves and stems. They need these nutrients to maintain their root systems and to support new leaf growth after grazing. A rising plate meter can help you leave enough stubble after grazing so the plant has the stored nutrients it needs to maintain its roots. For your ruminants, the goal in rotational grazing is to maximize intake from pasture. When pastures are six to seven inches tall, they're short enough and dense enough so that every bite can contain the greatest amount of dry matter. During the grazing season, the rate of forage growth and the rate of ruminant intake are both likely to change. Therefore, if you want to match forage availability and intake, you need to monitor pasture dry matter as often as possible and then use that information to calculate either pasture size or grazing interval so intake is not inhibited. A rising plate meter is a quick and accurate way to measure the dry matter in pastures as long as it's been calibrated for the forage species that you're measuring. A rising plate meter consists of a walking stick, this one has a yellow grip, and a weighted plate that rises as the meter is pressed down through the forage and then falls back as the rising plate meter is lifted. Here's a rising plate meter being used to take a single pasture measurement. With this FarmWorks rising plate meter, before measuring pasture dry matter, you turn the meter on, press the reset button, and then hold the reset button down to zero the meter. Then walk through the paddock, pressing the rising plate meter straight down onto the forage and on down to the soil surface with every few steps. Walk through a paddock in a lazy W pattern to capture the variability of the forage. You want to take at least 30 readings within a paddock, including patches of bare ground, but avoid weeds like thistles that won't be grazed. Then you want to stop and record the average rising plate meter for that paddock. This FarmWorks rising plate meter records counts, which are the number of readings that were taken. It gives you a cumulative reading for the paddock, and then it can calculate the average reading for that paddock. So, how do we calibrate a rising plate meter? We take a single reading and then calculate the amount of dry matter under the plate that resulted in that reading. This shows a three-sided square called a quadrat that has the same area as the plate of the meter which is shown underneath it. After taking a single reading, the quadrat is slipped under the plate and all the forage inside the quadrat is clipped down to the soil surface. Then, that forage is dried and weighed so we can convert the dry matter in that sample to a per acre basis. It's important to take calibration samples at different stages of growth and at different times of the grazing season to capture all the growth phases of one plant species. For more information on taking calibration samples, see the USU Extension Publication Guidelines for Visual Assessment of Herbage Mass and Pastures by Griggs and Pack. Here's a graph of the dry weights from two seasons of calibration samples taken for the forage legume birdsfoot trefoil. They're plotted against the rising plate meter reading that was taken when they were clipped. Every blue square represents one calibration sample and the red line is the generalized relationship between rising plate meter readings and the dry matter in bird's foot trefoil pastures. Here are a few different conversion factors that were developed at USU using the same method to convert FarmWorks rising plate meter readings to pounds of forage dry matter per acre. You can see that conversion factors will differ depending on the plant species. So for instance, a reading of 20 taken in a meadow brome pasture converts to 2,560 pounds of dry matter per acre while a reading of 20 taken in a perennial ryegrass pasture converts to 3,020 pounds of dry matter per acre. This drawing illustrates why forages that have different heights or densities might result in different calibration factors. On the left side of the drawing are two types of white clover that are both short and dense, and on the right side we have red clover and alfalfa, which both have upright stems, making them less dense. Grasses, unless they've gone to seed, are usually shorter and denser than alfalfa or red clover. 
A short, dense grass can actually have the same rising plate meter reading as a taller, less dense plant like alfalfa. Here's our extension bulletin on using a rising plate meter. It contains more details, including examples for both beef and dairy herds. These examples show how to use estimates of animal weight, intake, and grazing interval to calculate paddock size. This bulletin also contains a more complete table of conversion factors for a FarmWorks rising plate meter. So, a rising plate meter allows you to determine forage dry matter per acre both before and after grazing. This allows you to estimate either the paddock size you need, or if your paddock size is fixed, to estimate how long the paddock will provide forage for your animals. Then, after the paddock's been grazed, you can determine the residual dry matter per acre in the stubble and adjust your calculations so that you consistently leave 1,000 to 1,500 pounds of dry matter per acre, which is equal to 3 or 4 inches of stubble. We'd like to thank the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture Organic Agriculture Research and Extension Grant Program and the dairy producers who are our partners in this study for supporting our organic dairy research and the production of this video.